Did you know that if you take an 11 hour flight to another continent, drive on the highway for one hour and take the train across an entire capital, you can visit one of the largest aircraft collections in Southeast Asia. Not only that, but it houses some of the rarest planes in the entire world. What planes you ask? Well, you'll just have to stick around and find out. Subscribe. So after roughly 12 hours on the road, I finally arrived at the National Aviation Museum of the Royal Thai Air Force in Bangkok. And as soon as you enter the museum, you are greeted by this gorgeous Northrop F-5B Freedom Fighter. It's called the Oldest Tiger and it received its own decommissioning ceremony in 2007. And that has a very valid reason. Because this is not just any F-5B, but this is the first F-5B in the entire world. Note the beautiful tail design here. Right next to it is one of my favorite jet aircraft ever, the Gripen A fighter. There are only three Gripens on display worldwide and this is the only Gripen that is on display outside of Sweden. The other two are in some random Swedish military bases, I think. The Swedish government has donated this Swedish Air Force Gripen A to Thailand in 2012 for some magical reason, don't ask me why. Maybe that's because Thailand ordered 12 Gripens in 2008 to replace the older fives making Thailand the only country to operate the Gripen in Asia. Here it carries dual Thai and Swedish markings to show off both Air Force roundels. Also, I was completely alone in this museum, even though it was a weekend. There was only like one school class, so that's cool nonetheless. There's also this weird looking mannequin staring straight into your soul. I I'm scared. Could I have looked at the Gripen in Sweden instead of flying all the way to Thailand? Maybe, but since I'm here, let's just look at the other stuff around here. Anyway, there's also another F-5A here, beautifully showcasing its M39 20mm cannon. I'm a very big fan when museums show the internal mechanics behind a plane. Here's also a couple of bombs and rockets, the usual stuff you'd find mounted on an F-5. Right above it is the F-16A Fighting Falcon, a very very popular aircraft used by many countries all around the world. And Thailand still uses the F-16 alongside the Gripen. Meaning that every plane displayed here is still in active service with the Royal Thai Air Force. Here you can also see an AIM-9 air-to-air missile mounted on the wing. I also really really liked the design on the tail here. As much as I wanted to film more, my time was very limited for any proper recordings like I usually do. But I'll quickly go through the other sections of this massive museum. As we go outside, I know, big shocker, we are greeted by this Royal Thai Air Force 20th Anniversary Livery L-39 Albatross, followed closely by another two L-39 jets. Even though the Albatross is a trainer aircraft, these two right here have a centered point twin 23mm cannon and four underwing hardpoints for various weapons. And that thing over there is a Cessna A37 Dragonfly, one of the few military aircraft produced by Cessna. It's basically a T-37B tweed trainer, but with twice as powerful engines and underwing hardpoints for bombs and rockets etc. I personally like it a lot. Right next to it is a Dornier Dassault Alpha Jet. The Thai Air Force is actually the only operator of the Alpha Jet in Southeast Asia, and recently the Alpha Jet celebrated its 50th anniversary in the Dorney Museum in Germany. Next up, we have a Vietnamese MiG-21 BIS, which was donated by Vietnam in early 2014. I mean, can you really call it an aviation museum if it doesn't at least have one MiG-21 on display? The Thais actually never operated the MiG-21s, but the Vietnamese kindly gifted them this jet. This right here is yet another F-5. And let me tell you, this museum has a lot of them. So please, keep an eye out for them later in this video. They also have an A7 Corsair, you may know it as the Park Plane. It was an ex-US Navy aircraft, later served in the Royal Thai Navy and operated from Utah Pau in southern Bangkok. Then somewhere around in June of 2017, it was transported to the museum alongside this. An ex-Spanish Navy AV-8A Harrier, it operated off an aircraft carrier up until 2006, and just like the Alpha Jet and the A7, Thailand was the only operator of the Harrier in Southeast Asia. Now look at this very rare ferry Firefly, one of 24 surviving examples worldwide. The Royal Thai Air Force operated the Fireflies between 1952 and 1966. Continuing the British theme, here is a majestic Supermarine Spitfire FR-14E, 
This airframe in particular is in original condition with all of its equipment left in place just like it was back then. Moving on to this T-6 Texan, one of the many Texan aircraft delivered to Thailand by the US. Anyway, look at this beauty, a Rockwell OV-10 Bronco. Brought to Thailand by none other than the US's Okinawa, this type was in service until 2004 and since then this airframe has been part of this wonderful collection. After that there are a few light aircraft like this one or that one back there, but I'll show them anyways. Yeah, no clue what they are honestly. If you know, please tell me in the comments. To round up this outside section, I really want to show you this ancient biplane back there. This is a rare light bomber called the Body Patra, one of the few locally produced aircraft for the Royal Siamese Air Force in the 1920s, but more on that later. Now I'm at the Thai Historic Collection, which for some reason begins with this rather new fancy looking Thai Sky Scout UAV. It was revealed at the Defense and Security 23 Exposition in Bangkok. This is probably just some temporary exhibition by the Royal Thai Air Force, since they also got this beautiful painting right here showing off their fleet. Check it out. Alright, this second room is called the First Thai Aviators, and this is a replica of the French Breguet Type 3, which is one of the earliest French aircraft ever. On the other side, there's this new Borg 4G, one of the foundation aircraft of the Royal Thai Air Force. After buying four of those from France in 1913, Thailand built a fifth one locally in 1950. The Breguet is displayed here because one of the three Thai Air Force's founding fathers took his aviation course of this exact aircraft near Paris in 1912. Room number three is called Building Their Own Airplane, and in here we have this very rare Prashati Po. Also known as Fighter Type 5, there is very little information on this aircraft, but it is the first Thai fighter aircraft in history. There's also some parts from the first production line of this fighter. The next room is titled National Treasure, and for very good reason. This is the only surviving V-93S Corsair in the world. To this day it is considered National Treasure, because this was the expert variant of the US Navy O3U, which was modified locally. And if this wasn't enough, this right here is the only Curtis Hawk 3 left in the world. Also known as the Curtis BF-2C, this was the last Curtis fighter ever. There's also this engine and a propeller of a shot down P-51D that attacked Bangkok back in 1945. Overall, two very unique planes that attract visitors from all around the world, me included. After all, they are the only ones that remain in the entire world. Moving on to room number 5. Our air sovereignty shall not be violated. This exposition mainly focuses on some later aircraft from the Cold War, etc. This Grumman F-8F1 Bearcat that was used by the Royal Thai Air Force from 1951. It still mounts the HV rockets underneath both wings, and it is one of two aircrafts left in Asia, according to my knowledge. Personally, it's one of my favorite American fighter aircraft in history, and I am quite happy that I got to see it. Right next to it is the standard T-33A Shooting Star. It's one of the many T-33s that were used by the Royal Thai Air Force and all around the world. So, yeah. Here's also an F-84G Thunderjet and behind it is the RF-5A reconnaissance variant of the F-5A. Two very important jets that shaped the Royal Thai Air Force into the force it is today. Just outside of the last room there's this rare Percival Prince. There's only 9 of them left in the world. This is one of the museum's highlights, the Boeing 737-200. This was the main aircraft of the Thai VIP fleet up until 2006, when it was replaced with an Airbus A340. It was used for many, many overseas visits by the Thai royal family back in the day. I think I even got to see it once at my local airport, I'm not sure though. With its iconic tail number 22-222, as seen here. Here's a Beach C-45F, which is one of seven delivered to Thailand in 1947 by the Royal Air Force from the UK. And right behind it is the Swearingen SA-22-6AT Merlin 4A aircraft, which is still used with the Thai Navy today. That's a GAF N-22 Nomad that was used by the Royal Thai Air Force up until around December of 2015. Then there's this Beechcraft Bonsana over here, 
and right behind it is this massive Israeli built EAA Arava 201. This aircraft was used as a patrol aircraft and has now been replaced by UAVs. Here's another look at the glorious Royal 737. And as for the final aircraft, this is beautiful, beautiful Hawker Siddeley HS-748 that was, and you guessed it, also used by the Royal Thai Air Force. Let's take a quick look at the helicopter collection that's located in its own separate hangar. Starting off with this Sikorsky S-55. It's one of the eight helis used by the Royal Thai Air Force of its type. Behind it there's one of 19 Thai Sikorsky S-58Ts. Next to it there's a Japanese Kawasaki KH-4, followed by this monstrosity called the Westland Dragonfly 1A. This is the first helicopter that the Royal Thai Air Force ever received, but due to the hot tropical environment in Southeast Asia, they were retired somewhere in 1945. Next to it is the famous Yui Heli, but we all know what that looks like, it's boring. Here is a Kaman H43B Husky with its iconic twin intermeshing rotors. And right next to it is a Bell OH-13H Su, and another one right behind it. Here is an Sikorsky YH-5A. It operated alongside the Westland Dragonfly and got retired in the same year. Two absolutely, absolutely horrible looking helicopters if you ask me. There's also this Bell 206B trainer helicopter. And here's a Sikorsky UH-34D, which escaped from Laos, where it was operated by the Royal Laos Air Force. A nice addition, I guess. To end this little tour, let's take a look at a small collection I found at the back of the museum. And here we have a Brigue 14P replica that is actually airworthy. This replica was made for the French TV series called Telara Postale Courrier du Ciel. And that's a de Havilland DH-82A Tiger Moth, a very common basic trainer found all over the world. Now this is a bit more special. A Tachikawa Ki-55 Ida. It's basically a Ki-36 but with a single forward firing 7.7mm gun. This is one of only three Ki-55s left in the entire world, with the other two being located in Beijing. And there's another F5. This makes six in total I think. Next to this rather weird looking UAV I assume. This is a Curtis Hawk 75N. It was intended for local production, however, wartime activities ended these plans. It is one of five remaining aircraft of its kind around the globe, so it's also pretty rare. Next to it is a Boeing 100E that was delivered somewhere in 1931 and it was only retired in 1949. Hey Bill, wanna show the others what you bought? Yeah? Yo, check this out. <laughs> 